Welcome to the Elevate Podcast, conversations with women changing the face of business. And now your hosts, Christy Wallace and Maricela Herrera. Hello and welcome to the Elevate Podcast. This is your host, Christy Wallace, with my co-host, Maricela Herrera. Hi, Maricela. How's it going today? Hi, Christy. It's good. It's good. It's sunny. It's good. You know, as good as a pandemic can be. (laughs) So true. Uh, So for those of our listeners who've been following along, Maricel and I are both based in New York City or the New York City area uh, and continuing to tape the podcast remotely as we shelter in place during this time. So we just want to thank all of you so much for continuing to be part of our community and our listeners. We can't tell you how much we really appreciate the support during this time, your comments on social media, uh, when you tag us at Elevate NTWK or Elevate Network, as well as the emails we've received at podcast at elevatenetwork.com. It's really been meaningful to know that, that the stories we're sharing are relevant to you and in providing insights, inspiration, and thought leadership during this time. So thanks so much to all of our listeners who have been checking in with us. Uh, Please know how much we appreciate it. Yeah, we really, really do. Sharing these stories and and the work we do at Elevate, honestly, just just gives me hope and happiness in a way that um, I think is, is really special. I think we all need a little bit of inspiration in times like this and seeing what great things women in our community are doing and and everyone out there is doing. It's a light at the end of the tunnel. It is. And something that I I wanted to mention that's really been inspiring to me is the Elevate Her Ford Fellowship Grant. During this time, women have been economically impacted in in ways unimaginable, Uh, losing jobs, moving backwards in the workplace, and in the world. And we want to ensure that we stop that from happening. We want to help women to continue moving forward, to find jobs, to find support and community. And through the fellowship granting program, we're giving as many women as we can uh, who don't have the economic means to join the Elevate community through membership. Uh, We want to give them the access to the community, to the events, to the thought leadership, to the training, to our online squads program, but more importantly, to that access to opportunity, because we know that it really comes from your community, um, that connection to jobs, that connection to advice and insights. And we encourage you, if you know a woman who's been economically impacted during this time, to have her uh, apply for the fellowship grant. You can find information at elevatenetwork.com. And if you have the means and the inclination please help us create more change in this world by donating to the fellowship grant program so that we can help more women that have been impacted during this time. Absolutely. And everything that is contributed to this uh, fellowship fund is going directly to funding memberships for women and we're matching those donations. So we want to have as much impact as we can and help as many women who have been affected by the pandemic, who who have lost their jobs, uh, who have been furloughed, really get the support. I mean, we've seen it from our community. We hear how much the impact of Elevate has helped them, not just in finding confidence to try new things, to change their careers, to find new jobs, but also to just not feel alone because it's a powerful group. It's a powerful community of women who are here showing up for each other without necessarily another agenda. It's all about how can we help others be successful and ourselves be successful at the same time, because at the end of the day, a rising tide lifts all boats. That is so true. And our guest today, Jen De Silva, who's the president of Berlin Cameron, talks about this quite a bit in our conversation She's such a huge proponent for women and women in the workplace, uh, both as a, an ally, a friend, a leader, and has even created initiatives uh, such as her Connect Four, where she's trying to bring women together uh, through the power of connection in her everyday life. 
So I'm excited to introduce my conversation to Jen, and I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you back here next week on the Elevate Podcast. Jen, thanks for joining us today on the Elevate Podcast. You and I, I always like to talk about how I met people uh, because I think the power of not just making connections, but cultivating those connections, uh, turning them to something that's authentic and true is really important. Uh, and it's something that has not just served as a great peer network for me, but you know, there's lots of collaboration um, and opportunities that have come from our relationship, our friendship. Uh, so we met on a panel. We were on a panel for Ad Week, right? Mm-hmm. Many years, like two years ago, I think. It was like three years three ago. Three years ago. Yeah. And, and it's three years ago, September. And it was interesting. Initially, I wasn't slated to be on the panel. Someone else was. And then she couldn't do it. So she called on me, gave me the opportunity. We were on it together. We got to know each other. And now fast forward many years, and we're still really good friends. So the power of you know, connections and access to opportunities and, you know, getting, getting your voice out there. So thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. Uh, We always start talking about someone's background and I'm excited to talk about your background because it's a story we don't hear about often, but it's a really important one, which is finding a place that really is home to you Mm -hmm. um, professionally and, and, growing within that organization and gaining a ton of exposure and leadership along the way. So often there's this rhetoric around like you have to keep moving, 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 going all over the place. But there's times when it it's right. And yeah. if you would share a little bit about your history at Berlin Cameron and your professional journey there. Awesome. Uh, I actually started at WPP. That was my first job, which is Berlin Cameron is owned by WPP. So this is about 20 years ago. And I'm dating myself at this amazing group called the Intuition Group. And it was a marketing group to women. And I think it was unfortunately a little bit before its time. I remember we had clients like Clairol Herbal Essences, and they were just figuring out how to put natural products and things and banks. And we were thinking about how we could market to women. And as an intern, I was I loved this company. I thought it was the most interesting company ever. They put me in front of clients as an intern. I did a presentation. And it really got me excited about the industry. And it got me excited about marketing to women. And I think that that's always been part of my passion. Uh, I did a brief stint at another agency working on British Airways. And then I, Berlin Cameron, um, put in the call to come work on Coca-Cola And that was a really exciting opportunity at the time. And this is 17 years ago that I started there. So I was unmarried. I had no kids. So many things have changed since then. And the first day that I arrived, uh, they said, so you're going to get on a plane and you're going to go down to a Coke meeting and it's going to be really great, but it's a one day thing. So you don't need to bring anything and they're going to love you. And I'm like, don't I need any background, anything? And they're like, no, no, you're going to be fine. This is an immersion meeting. You're going to love it. So I get down there and the client's like, great to meet you. Here's the plan. This is going to be four days. What? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, this is how it is. But there's something that I loved about that, that it was so entrepreneurial. And I saw in it right there that it kind of this was the place that was going to be what I made it. And even from, you know, a junior level of being like an account supervisor working on Coca-Cola, getting the opportunity to be, you know, in Atlanta with the clients, not really supported, but um, able to really, really grow by doing And that's why I've stayed there so long. It's been a constant reinvention, you know, whether it be new clients, new opportunities, new divisions to build, new ways to set the company forward based on cultural initiatives. And, you know, there's no one that's saying, no, I'm just doing. And I really love that. It doesn't feel like I'm inside of some box that's like, this is your particular client and this is all that we are are expecting of you. I feel like the world is so open for me to create change there internally. That's exciting. Uh, And and I agree that idea of, you know, being able to constantly reinvent yourself or challenge yourself in new ways. How do you find the confidence? And and part of me is smacking myself because it's kind of, that is definitely a gendered question, but it's something that we hear a lot from women in our community is, you know, when you 
end up in that new role and now you're leading an entire organization, um, it's you're learning on the job, right? There's no playbook. There's no and and how do how is that experience for you learning what leadership looks like for you, and why has that journey been so important? I you know I've always been a fairly confident person. I'm an only child and my parents kind of raised me to be independent, entrepreneurial and, you know, really create my own experiences even as a kid. But I think when I started at Berlin Cameron, I wasn't completely like that. My boss just recently said to me, Jen, I have never seen someone change as much as you have. Um, in their time here. And I, and he said, and sometimes I feel like it's impossible for people to change, but you have completely reinvented yourself. And I think a lot of that was about confidence. And one of the things that I think a lot of people don't tell you, especially when you enter into a creative field and you're a more of a support person, I'm an account person by trade. So I'm taking care of people. I'm taking care of the work. I'm taking care of my staff. I'm taking care of the client that often you forget yourself in the process and what your own point of view is. And a especially as a junior person, there's no one telling you that your story is actually essential to selling work and to selling the agency and to making people follow you as a team. And I don't think it was until maybe 10 years in at Berlin Cameron that I started to see that, right? And what was my story? What was my point of view? And how could I bring that you know, to Berlin Cameron and create change based on that. Instead, when I was first starting, it was more about how do I sell the work? How do I support the people? And um, I, I think it was through some leadership training that WPP has provided. I think it was also um, by starting to become a thought leader and a leader that I had to force myself to develop a point of view. And that wasn't easy. Actually, sometimes I found myself even calling upon you, whereas, Christy, what do you think about this for this particular article that I'm working on and being very comfortable in the interview format, but actually being very uncomfortable with my point of view on the topic. But now I found that some of the most successful work that I've done in that space is when I've actually, when it's been centered around my point of view, not that others' points of view aren't you know, great. It's just that when you have your own story and you can make people listen and engage in that story, then people want to be around you and want to hear it. When you've talked a lot about uh, authenticity, vulnerability, which which is coming through in what you're saying right now, it's kind of being open to different perspectives, but then being authentic and what is meaningful to you and what matters to you. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other skills and traits that you found to be really important as as a leader and in a creative field? I think being able to think on the spot is really important, especially with clients when you have to have a solution right away. Um, I think being able to solve a problem very quickly and make people feel like you have the answer. I think making people feel supported, that you care about them on your team, that you are thankful for the things that you know, they are doing and you're, um, you're showing them gratitude. And I think that vulnerability and authenticity is a really huge part of my story, which I, I mean, I actually can't believe that is my story because you talked about when we met mm -hmm. and all, everyone always says this to me and, and you felt it too, is when we met on the panel, you were like, oh, you know, that's Jen De Silva, but I was fairly guarded and I, that's just the way I am when I first meet people. And that's always been, I was brought up by two accountants and who are very structured and wonderful people. I love them very much, but that was the way it always was. I had to dress a certain way. I had to act a certain way. And until I became a mother and like started to open up to people and really started to share who I was and all the things that I'm scared about and all the things that I do wrong and the fact that I have flaky hair because I just got it dyed the other day and all of those missteps, you know, people could then connect with me. And I think, you know, that for me is really my superpower. That really resonates. And, and I hadn't thought of it that way before, but it's so true, which is we sort of grow, grow up trying to fit a mold and, and what does this person look like or you know how do they act this title this function all these these labels and mm -hmm. we're trying to fit into that mold as a label but then how does your real self shine through mm -hmm. and it's kind of being coming comfortable with your voice um, mm -hmm. like you were talking about in your thought leadership and becoming comfortable with the fact that you know not everyone is going to 
maybe not everyone's going to agree. Not everyone's going to understand. Not everyone's going to be in the same camp. But that's okay. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's totally okay. But you you believe in who you are. Yeah. I had an article that came out that the headline said, I've cried at work and other things that I wish people would talk about. And I remember when it got posted on Refinery, I was like, <gasps> do I share this with anyone? Yeah. Like, I mean, are people going to still think that I'm an effective leader and the fact that I'm telling everyone in the world that I've cried at work? And actually, there were some haters like in the really yeah in the comments and people so, like maybe you shouldn't tell. be a leader you're never supposed to read the comments you I know, know. you're I'm, never supposed I, to read I, the so comments I always read the comments I'm not I'm not famous enough to not, <laughs> to not read the comments but I yeah I was I it was good though and I'm so glad that I got that out there and you know I'm proud of it and but that initial kind of feeling where you're like oh and your stomach clenches up when it goes out into the world and you've told everyone you know the truth and and that you think that truth is okay it still can make you feel very very vulnerable yeah oh yeah and it is it is scary but it's also you're you're breaking down those stereotypes like it's scary and, and there's haters because you were told you're not supposed to do that mm -hmm. right but why not yeah who says that like you can't show emotion at work I mean, why is that such a bad thing and why is it a thing that's so closely tied to gender identity as well um, and as a stigma there, which I just think if you are passionate about the work you do and passionate about the humans you work alongside of, then sometimes there's real and strong emotion there and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's been a lot of reasons why I've cried. I mean, you, you put so much energy into something, right? And being somewhere for 17 years, like a pitch, right? A pitch we put hours and hours of thinking and time and energy and resources and all the all like love into mm -hmm. the document and it gets over and sometimes it's like this release you know yeah. and not every pitch I've I've cried but that one and you know sometimes when someone leaves that's just been yeah. instrumental to you know your path at the company yeah. you know that's but or you're just having a really bad day and trying to balance it all as a mom and you're not doing anything well and you know, it's inevitable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's so many things we have no control over. You yeah. Know, so you just have to. Definitely not our kids. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not at all. You have also created an initiative, Girl Bands Do It Better. Mm -hmm. And that's a collaboration. Uh, and it's something that you are, are really passionate about. And I've got a really cool shirt at home to wear and to wear proudly. Uh, tell me about how this started and what Girl Bands Do It Better is all about. So it started this was about five or six years ago, and we started working with some startup clients. And we've always been, we have an entrepreneurial spirit, so the clients that uh, work with us often have this spirit as well. Um, and in working with startups over the years, you know, we thought, well, why don't we consider taking equity in some of these companies? So we started working with one female founder, and it didn't start off as like, okay, this is going to be a female or woman-led initiative. Um, but one woman led to another woman led to another woman and it, and it became a thing about supporting women and it's become a passion area of mine and we're how we're doing it now is mostly through pitch competitions and some of those we've been collaborating with you where we bundle together services that a um, a woman led business would need like co-working space, um, advertising services, media, maybe coverage, PR, legal, all of these things. And then we get them to pitch to us and we're able to choose someone that you know, we want to work with and build their story. And we've been um, really successful in building some stories over the years. And one one that I really personally love is our work on Chromat. Um, it's a very diverse and inclusive brand. And she wanted to build her direct-to-consumer business because Barney's and Nordstrom at the time would only buy up to a 12 Right. So she wanted to be for everyone mm -hmm. and she needed to get customers to the site. So we built we redefined the pool rules. So mm -hmm. it wasn't about you know no running at the pool. It was about no food shaming, all abilities accepted. And we um, had content for each of the rules with um, some amazing influencers like Mama Cox, who is no longer here with us anymore. And um, some other amazing influencers and 50 publications globally covered it. Um, we had no paid media. 
and wow. I think it, I forget 50 million impressions and a 35% increase in sales for the brand. So mm-hmm. we've had some really great success stories and that's enabled us to sell to, to clients who are interested in an agencies who a know how to work with startups because they want to understand that. Right. Mm-hmm. But also um, agencies who understand how to market to female or um, women consumers and, and we've been able to show that through some of the work that we've done yeah. um, with these startups. And I know Cormat was on a panel you did at South by Southwest, mm-hmm. uh, but that was really looking at how brands lead with diversity. Mm-hmm. And, and what were some of your key takeaways there? One of my favorite things about Becca is it's not just about like who's in the ad. It's about all the way like to the back and who's actually helping and supporting crew. And so it's thinking about, you know, who's doing the hair and do we have the right people to do the right kind mm-hmm. of hair? And and have we covered representation in, in the back of the house just as much of the front of the house? And so I think that that's really, really important and really showing how her brand could be, you know, gender fluid, who, how it could be for all abilities. And I think she has done a fabulous job with that. And actually the rules we have, I think there were nine of them. And she was, she showed them to a lot of people in her community to make sure that we had them all right. And I think that that was important to actually ask those questions because oftentimes we as marketers and advertising, we don't have all the right answers. Yeah. My husband likes to say that companies should hire a chief common sense officer. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is a really important thought, right? So to be looking back, talking to your consumers. And I think Becca did that really well. Yeah, she did. And that was a great panel. So a lot of what you have talked about today is just around building these connections. You know, how you and I met and Mm -hmm. the people you interviewed for your articles, brands you work with, and how you're really tapping into their communities. And you're creating an ecosystem that's not, you know, one-sided, but like how are you supporting and pulling multiple different levers to really create change? Uh, you did something recently, the Connect Four, Connect by Four. Connect Four Women, yep. Uh, and uh, ironically, someone just reached out to me yesterday that you had connected me with a while ago. And she's like, oh, Jenna connected us a while ago, and I'm following back up. And it was really kind of like fun to see that in my mm-hmm. inbox. And can you share about that initiative? Because I mm-hmm. think it's it's a practice that all of our listeners could can do every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want to give you credit for that brainchild that you've <laughs> created. It's women supporting women is is not a need to have. It's a must have. And we all have the tools and abilities to do it. It's just about finding actionable ways to make it simple for yourself. And one of the ways that, you know, one morning I was on the treadmill and I'm like, oh, I need to create some social content. <laughs> what should I do? And I was like, oh, connect four women. I don't know. It just like popped into my head. Every day I'll connect four women. And so what that meant is create a, is two emails and connecting two people in each email. So it's so simple. It takes five minutes for each email, not even. And I'm making a warm lead for that woman that it could help them, you know, do a partnership. It could create new business, Mm -hmm. a friendship. I've heard people have gotten jobs through it. And it's really meaningful. And I'm not doing it for any reason other than helping women, you know, connect to each other and amplify their voices and get heard and get to that next level. Um, But I do love hearing the stories. How many of the people you connect follow up and share with you the impact of those connections? I ask because it's this pet peeve of mine, which is, you know, I mean, people tap into my network all the time. Mm. You know, can you uh, either, can you give me advice on what's next? I'm Mm -hmm. looking for a job. Can I talk to you about it? Can you connect me to this person or can you connect me to that person? And and I'm always happy to do it. I mean, I really do believe in the power of community and others using their privilege and platform to open doors Mm -hmm. for you if you need it, right? And and I'm very fortunate to have a big network. I mean, Mm -hmm. I run one, so. Um, And and I like doing that for people, but I rarely hear back, like, you know, from someone who, I mean, of course, there's the thank you, but, you know, a week later, a month later, even a year later saying, oh, hey, this connection resulted in, Mm -hmm. you know, a meeting or right it resulted now. in a friendship or resulted in, hey, this didn't pan out, but thanks again. Right. And I agree with you. It's not about like I'm not looking to get thanks. I'm not looking to, um, you know, build on my ego. I'm looking to just know that I'm 
having an impact. Totally. That all these little things that you do, these micro instances of connections and advice are are changing lives because that's what we want. That's what we're here for, you know, um, is to do good work but meaningful work and to have an existence on this planet that yeah. serves others beyond just ourselves. Yeah, I totally agree. I was at um, Oprah. I saw. At Barclays uh, with Michelle Obama. My team is doing the event uh, nationwide and helping um, activate it. And so it was amazing to see their work. And I mean, they've been working their bums off on this thing. Um, But it was also amazing to see Oprah. And she talked about intention and setting your intention. And the the effort that you put in would be the effort that you get back. She showed a pendulum, mm-hmm. you know, on the screen. And I thought to myself, like, sometimes that, that pendulum isn't going to swing back right away, right? Mm-hmm. You're not going to know that something magical happened out of one of the connections. But ultimately some way the universe, you know, will, yeah. it's not like you're going to get a gift, but all of this things and, you know, effort and love that you put in will come back around. And I mm. truly believe that. And she talked a lot about it. So it was nice to kind of see that and, you know, even just feel that. And I mean, and the intention of doing like connect for women and having that simple intention every day. And it's, se- I know it seems hard to a lot of people. They can do connect for a week. That's fine. But having that, it's just a action that you can take every day. Yeah. That's a little step in the right direction of helping women. Well, and so there's another campaign you did, which I thought was admirable and really great, around um, wearing women designers. And so for an entire month, every single day, you were wearing a different designer and you were sharing pictures. And and I mean, I just love what you do on social media. I think, you know, your treadmill creative (laughs) sessions are doing magic. Um, But one of the problems I know you had with that is is finding the designers because a lot of of shopping sites and other sites don't Mm -hmm. make it evident that, you know, uh, that we can support women and, and, and find those designers. Absolutely. And that's one of the things, I mean, with girl brands, we've been able to help, you know, 10 to 15 various different, you know, female founded startups. And I love it. And I always get so behind each, each of these brands that we're involved with. And I wanted to be able to help more than just that and shine a light on how difficult it is to do this research and find these companies and actually look at where there's holes. And I try to do it more than just my clothing. I had all my makeup um, was female founded. I did it for um, Cannes, the Creativity Festival, so dressed all entirely. And even my suitcase was away female founded. And then I did it again for Small Business Month in October. And it, it can be much easier. Um, and companies could make it much easier for us all to shop our values, whether it be, you know, women led companies or whether it be sustainability or whatever it is that you're passionate about. But companies aren't putting that first. It's all about kind of the search. So if we are more actively searching, you know, oh, what's a woman founded jean company? What's a woman founded T-shirt brand? You know, those are going to start increasing the search equation, Mm -hmm. which will then kind of start to change the dynamic of stores um, having filters like this. And I think, you know, we could make it much easier for these brands to be found. And that's like one of the things that I would really love to highlight through Girl Brands is highlighting more than just one company at a time. How Mm -hmm. can we highlight multiple founders at one time? Yeah. I mean, we need to to change the conversation. And and it's back to Oprah, like be very intentional about you know, the brands we buy, who are promoting and supporting, who are connecting. I think, you know, also very specifically being intentional about supporting and connecting people that don't look like you and, yeah. and how we can do more to go outside of the, you know, traditional networks, which are very homogeneous yeah. and to I change agree. that. That's that's a hugely important, you know, impact that I know you're passionate about, but that, yeah. you know, I encourage everyone to to be very intentional about that. No, I, I definitely agree. And when I was thinking about the, the women-led companies that I was using and wearing, I was thinking about that lens as well. I mean, it was it was difficult. I think one of the most difficult things about it was the picture every day. I was like, oh, my kids were taking it. My husband was taking it, rolling his eyes. I only got one take and I didn't look good in it, you know, things like that. But it was fun. I don't know. I haven't decided yet if that's on the docket this year. Yeah. So we'll, so we'll have to see. But, you know, now it's just one of those examples of why it's so hard to be 
a, a founder, a female founder, and just yeah. you know, here people are generally trying to find yeah uh, your products, and it's and it's difficult. So let's change that. Yeah, absolutely, we must change it, and we must change it beyond March. Yes. And then Agreed. these and these big are, are you mean our one month a year? Yes, exactly. We are every day the whole year, you know, we should be noticed. And I think that it's important that brands don't look at it as just like, oh, what is my International Women's Day initiative? It's what is my program for women all year round? What is my pro- program for gender diversity all year round and fluidity? Could not be said better. Well, thanks, Jen, for joining us on Thank the Elevate podcast. Thanks so much for listening to Elevate. If you like what you hear, help a girl out. Subscribe to the Elevate podcast on iTunes. Give us five stars and share your review. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Elevate NTWK. That's Elevate Network. And become a member. You can learn all about membership and all the great things that Elevate Network is doing at our website, www.elevatenetwork.com that's e-l-l-e-v-a-t-e network.com and special thanks to our producer Catherine Heller she rocks and to our voiceover artist Rachel Griesinger thanks so much and join us next week